on them. Um, I, I, did, I forgot to keep one for myself. Here we go. Uh, if you look on them, they have GFCI and they have AFCI on it. And then they have um, 30, is that milliamps or microamps? That's milliamps. 30 milliamps, and then they have a load button. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just talk through each one of these buttons because they're all kind of cool. So does anybody know, first off, what GFCI stands for? You said ground circuit fault interrupter. That would be it. That would be a GCFI. <laughs> ground fault circuit interrupter. Okay, so a lot of people call it a GFI. Um, anybody know what a GFI does? How does GFI work? Yeah, I mean it's a breaker. It's a type of a it's a type of a of a circuit breaker. It breaks the circuit. Circuit breaker is a pretty easy pretty easy term. Um, fuse is kind of a tricky word. Have you ever thought about fuse? Like what what a fuse means? Let's think about it for a second. Where's another place that you see a fuse other than electrical? Starbucks. A bomb. I was thinking fireworks, but yeah. you just went straight for bomb. <laughs> fireworks. Yeah, that kind of thing. And so fuse actually means that it breaks. And so you, it could mean breaks the circuit, but when we say a fuse, we generally mean something that is a one-time use, right? So fuse blows on you. And when you light a fuse, it's gone once it's completely fused. So it is a ground fault circuit interrupter, so it's a type of circuit breaker. It's something that breaks a circuit and is designed to be able to be reset. And so you all know in a lot of your bathrooms or you know your garage, um, sometimes outside on a porch, any wet or damp environment has to be protected. Any convenience outlet needs to be protected by a GFCI. So that's where you see bathrooms, kitchens, um, lanai's, outdoor spaces, garages, that kind of thing, right? Well, why do you have a GFCI in those spaces? Because you drop the hair dryer in the bathtub. Yeah, right. Whether you do it on purpose or an accident, either way, <laughs> it's going to protect you. That's the point. Um, and so how it works is, is it looks for an imbalance between in current between hot and neutral. That's all it's doing. And so think about that for a second. If you have current moving out on hot and the same amount of current's not moving back on neutral, what does that tell you about the circuit? What does it tell you about the circuit? There's no path. Well, there is a path. Or there's another path. There's another path. That's what you said. Okay. I thought you said there's no path. No, like, there oh, wait, we, need to, we need to speak. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's another path. So you have current leaking somewhere. And specifically, it's leaking to ground somewhere. And if it's leaking to ground somewhere, that means there's a path to ground that doesn't, isn't supposed to be there. And so you may say to yourself, as I'm sure you are right now, because you're all inquisitive young lads, you say to yourself, self, I thought that was the point of a circuit breaker, a regular circuit breaker, right? So let's think about a regular circuit breaker. Standard single pole circuit breaker in your panel. What is the amperage rating of a standard circuit breaker in your panel? Fifteen or twenty. Fifteen or twenty, right? Most of, so a lot of the, a lot of the small ones are fifteen, and sometimes you get some twenties. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. All right. So what makes a fifteen or twenty amp circuit breaker trip break the circuit? Anyone? 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 We need somebody else here. We need somebody else. What makes it a 15 Alfonso. or 20 amp circuit breaker break the circuit? Go ahead. Higher than 15 or 20 amps. Higher than 15 or 20 amps, right? Yes. Yes. Get it. Pretty straightforward, right? The circuit has to draw that much. Well, if you work Ohm's law, okay? Now, I think there's somebody in here who's probably pretty good at math. Right? Don't wish you if you work me. Ohm's law, no? I, I mean, I could, but. I mean, this is pretty basic stuff, Ohm's law equals I times R, right? And basically what it comes down to is, I'll just, I'll just give it away, right? That in order for that math to work, you're around 10 amps, I mean, 10 ohms, uh, in order for it to break the circuit. And if you've ever checked the resistance across your body, have you ever done that? Take an ohmmeter, check the resistance across your body, finger to finger, or like you can do it all kinds of spots. Okay. What type of resistance is the human body? Well, about what level of resistance? Does anybody know? I should have brought a, I should have brought a meter. Alfonso has a meter. Is that a meter? Yeah, it's Gray's meter. But. Is it? Okay. Yeah, let's 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 check. So who wants to who wants to do it? I know somebody's really excited. All right, Angel's going to do it. He wants to resist. Only out. <laughs> <laughs> Only out. Now I'm going to be real honest. This, this is kind of a proven fact. 
the manlier you are, and I know you're probably not even supposed to say that anymore, the term manly, but the manlier you are, the higher the resistance oh, shoot. you are. <laughs> 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 the higher the resistance you are. And there actually is, there's, there's reasons behind this, which I'll talk about. See, I have, uh, because I haven't been working in the field as much, I have soft hands, and I'm very, I'm a, I'm a clammy person, you know, just a clammy guy. So, what's, what's it, what's it? I got it in continuity. Well, yeah, you don't want a continuity, you want, you want to measure something. All right, there you go. So what do you got? Uh, 1.6. 1.6? 1.7. 1.7 is rising because my manliness is going up. You <laughs> <laughs> manly thoughts? Yeah. Wow, Jamie. <laughs> so, this, this is going up. Yeah. All right, so right, one point, off. Let's see what 1.7 <laughs> <laughs> what? I got 2 right now. 2 what? 2.3. Zero, three, no, no, I'm not sure. Oh, mega ohms. Oh, mega ohms. Right? Uh, oh, I was like, oh, okay. So, how many ohms is a mega ohm? It's like 106 It's a million. Yeah. It's a million ohms. Right? Yeah. So, if it takes a circuit of 10 ohms, about, and I'm really going around there because I don't feel like doing math, 10 ohms to trip a circuit breaker, and you're over a million ohms, does that mean that you're more or less likely to trip a circuit breaker? Less likely. You're less likely, right? Because you have more resistance. You're a high resistance path, which means that you're a very low current path. That makes sense? Higher the resistance, lower the current. You have resistance to electricity, not as much is gonna move. Make sense? Okay, so that means that if I take 120 volts off of a 20 amp breaker, and I take it and I connect it to your body, is it going to trip the breaker? No. No, it's not. You'll just talk to that. <laughs> right? Uh, and it will be, you will conduct in the um, micro, not, not micro, I, I always get microamps and milliamps in the milliamp scale. Mm. So you will only draw milliamps. Is that breaker going to trip if you're only drawing milliamps? No. no. Because you're not a very good conductor of electricity, right? Now let me let me dispel something else here. What's the saying that people? One of the first things you learn about electricity: electricity takes the path finish the of sentence path of least resistance. Path of least oh. resistance, right? So that means that if I have something else plugged in here that's lower resistance, like a light bulb, for example. Let's say that light bulb is oh I don't know, 150 ohms. And you're two million, two million ohms. Yeah, that's right. So you connect a light bulb, light bulb's lit, and then I say, you know what? Because that's the path of least resistance. Now, if I take my take a fork and stick it in here and grab it, it's not going to shock me, right? Uh, will it shock you? Of course. Of course, it will shock you. So does electricity only take the path of least resistance? No. No. It takes all paths. So why do people say such a friggin' stupid thing all the time? <laughs> I don't know why they say that, because it's a useless statement. Electricity takes all parallel paths. But what does move more through a path of least resistance? Current. More current moves through the path of least resistance. There you go. So why don't we say electricity, the greatest amount of current, moves through the paths of least resistance? Because that would be a true statement. The other statement's also true. Electricity takes the path of least resistance, but it also takes all the other paths. So it sort of seems like a senseless thing to say, right? So, so what is the purpose of a GFCI? The purpose is to protect folks from getting shocked. Make sense? Ground fault circuit interrupter. And why do you put it in places that are wet or damp? Because you become easier conductor if you step in the water. Exactly. Much easier for you to get shocked in damp or wet environments. That's why the code has that. Okay. Make sense? So what does this do with GFCI? Well, you plug it into a GFCI. It has a little Google extension plug. You plug it in. You hit the button, and it tests the circuit, trips the circuit, right? You also have that 30 microamp, milliamp, keep doing this, milliamp button. What do you think happens when you hit that button? It simulates. So you getting shocked. It simulates 30 milliamps. So now it's not just testing to see if it will trip. 
it's testing to see if it will trip at the right level, right? And so that's why we, I'm giving you the tool because you can just hit the button and see if it trips on the outlet. You know, you've seen the outlets that have the, the trip and reset, but that trip and reset often is kind of a sloppy measure. It's like, does it trip? Well, sure, it trips, but does it trip at the right level? All right, make sense? So let's talk AFCI, arc fault circuit interrupter. What do you think makes an AFCI trip? Contact. Contact? Like, but, I mean, sure, yeah. But what's the word? Arc. 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 There you go. So what do you think makes it trip? Fire. Arc. And arc. arc. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing how this stuff works. <laughs> it trips when there's an arc, right? So the purpose of a GFCI is to keep you from getting shot. Is there necessarily an arc if you're getting shot? No, not necessarily, because you're a very low current path. It might not arc at all, you just, you, you start melting, but, uh, but there's not necessarily an arc. Arc fault circuit interrupter is when there is an arc. And so an arc fault circuit interrupter is a much more complicated circuit, because it's not looking for an imbalance on um, neutral and high. It's looking for a particular sign signature that indicates the presence of an arc. Why do you have an arc fault circuit interrupter? Because you don't want an arc. Because you could have, say, a, a bad connection in an outlet, and somebody goes and plugs in a vacuum cleaner. And it's arcing in there, but it's not drawing high current. Because an arc doesn't necessarily have to draw high current for there to be an arc. Right? It's just bad contact. And it's sitting there, and it's arcing in the wall up against the stud, and then you end up having a fire. So that's what it's preventing. And where do you see what? circuits are protected by an arc fault circuit interrupter in your homes? You know? Okay. Oh, exactly. Almost every, almost nowadays, almost every normally occupied room with convenience outlets. So, outlets. And so if you look at a circuit breaker, if you look at a breaker panel in a modern house, you're going to see normal breakers like we put in for an air conditioner. Uh, they don't have any little trip buttons on them or anything. And then you're going to see one whole side that have these little, generally white, trip buttons on them. Yeah. If you look at a panel, and this is one of the big things I'm, I'm wanting to remind you of, because you are going to start looking at, at panels with thermal imaging cameras, mm -hmm. you're going to see one whole side, generally, of the panel, or one whole portion of it, where the breakers are hot. Our fault breakers run hot because of the circuit that's in them, and again, this is not a technical explanation, but because of the circuit in them that is constantly looking for arc. So they actually have, uh, they actually do get warmer. And there may be some exceptions to this, but all the ones I've ever looked at get hotter. So I want you to know that because the first time you look at a panel with a thermal imaging camera, you're gonna notice, whoa, these breakers are all hot. This must be a problem, right? And so what are you looking for? You're looking for an arc fault that's hotter than the other arc faults. You don't look at an arc fault that's hotter than a non-arc fault because then it will always be hotter than the non-arc fault. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so what are you testing when you hit that AFCI button and you plug it into an arc fault circuit? Does it work? You're simulating an arc. That's what you're doing. And so you're seeing if that circuit trips because you're plugged into it right now. Am I expecting you on a maintenance to go through and check every single outlet and every single breaker in the entire house. Yes. I know. No, I'm not. I'm not. That's not practical. All right. So what are you going to do? And again, we're launching this next week, so it's not. I'm not. I'm just getting you prepared for this. You're going to have a conversation with the client, and you're going to say, "Hey, do you have any circuits that trip on you irregularly? Any dimming lights? Anything you notice that's abnormal electrically?" And if they say no. You're going to go to the highest risk areas, which are the GFIs, right? Bathrooms, garages, porches, those sorts of things. You're going to check those. That's all. You're not going to check every AFCI in the whole house. Now, you may check one or two, again, depending on the client. Yeah, when I plug in my, or every once in a while when there's a, uh, a lightning strike or something, this, this one bedroom is always tripping. Okay, well, that's where you go check. Next thing, what's, a, what's another button that's on this bad boy? Four main buttons. Already talked about three of them. Thirty milliamp. Thirty milliamp. Low. No, oh, well, there you go. So the first thing that's kind of cool about this is, when you plug it in, it's going to automatically tell you even if it's wired correctly or incorrectly. So it's going to tell you if maybe there's uh, 
uh, you know, you have neutral and ground mixed or whatever, or, or polarity uh, reversed. It's also going to give you your voltage. But the neat thing is it has this load button. And what that does is, is it looks at it looks at what the voltage drop is going to be at various load conditions. So if you are at 20 amps, this circuit's going to drop down to 120 volts. So it's showing you fully loaded and partial loaded how well this circuit's going to operate. Because it does this very instantaneous little load if it's on the circuit and then it looks at voltage drop. So it's doing a calculation. And so if you have a client who's saying, hey, this circuit's acting finicky on me, that's, that's the test you're going to do. Because it's going to tell you, is it wired wrong? Do you have maybe neutral and ground connected in areas? Because that will cause weird behavior. Um, and then it can also do that load test on that circuit. It's a pretty rad tool, like even around your own house. Like it's a pretty cool thing. And I just gave it to you for free. So what do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You thank Mr. Kalos. That's who you thank. Because I've often had people tell me that they know Mr. Kalos. I'm like, yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. <laughs> nice guy. Mr. Bob. Um, yeah, so kind of, a, kind of a cool tool. And that's all it does. It just has those four features. Uh, and it gives you the ability to go around and, and test those things. Now, like, like we mentioned, it's a lot more sizzle than steak, right? But it doesn't hurt anything. Are we trying to scam a customer, sell them anything? No, we're not. We're demonstrating. This is basically the most advanced, normal electrical test that you can do in a client's house. I mean, like sure, you can pull out a mego meter and check the insulation under every circuit. Nobody's ever going to do that. So what are we demonstrating? We're demonstrating that we have the right tool and we can troubleshoot common problems in their home. Now, what would happen if the client had a real problem? Like something that was, you're like, oh, wow, this is okay, this is actually an issue. The so panels <laughs> burned up. Right, now you're gonna call the electricians on it, right? That's what you're gonna do. But by having a thermal imaging camera and this, mm -hmm. you're gonna have the best tools at your disposal to notice if there's an issue. Mm -hmm. And you are, it's just a, a very, you're gonna do a detailed visual inspection of the main panels, the disconnects, anything, anything major, you're gonna just check disconnects, all that. Uh, water heater, it's not a lot to do there other than drain it, and you're going to be trained on how to do that, how to, how to flush a water heater. Um, and other than that, it's mostly just talking to the customer about what their concerns are. For example, with water heater, you're going to check the water temperature, make sure it's actually matching what the thermostat set, make sure it's safe, those sorts of things. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast, available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications, available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex. Bytex.